This was not what I was expecting to do with my week. I got a text from... Jesus. I got a text from a friend telling me that I might be interested in this particular device. I cover a lot of retro handhelds on this channel, so why not a retro computer? Retro handhelds, for the most part, emulate older systems so that you can play games on modern hardware. Wouldn't that be cool if there was a computer that emulated older computers so you can play those games on modern hardware? And that's where I messed up. There is nothing modern about this thing, except for the fact that it's got a nice screen and that it was made this year in 2024 and available right now for purchase in 2024. That's it. This isn't a PC game emulator. This is just an old PC that you can buy right now. This here is just a Windows 3 PC with old Windows 3 components. Yes, you heard me right. Windows 3. It's not Windows 98. It's not Windows 95. No, it's Windows 3.1, which came out in 1992. Or it was Windows 3.1. It magically became Windows 95. But that's a story we'll have to get to. I told you it's been a hell of a week. It's also DOS. We can't forget about DOS. There are zero modern conveniences here. You have to really want to dive head first into the 90s if you want to try this thing. At first, it was extremely frustrating. Then once I reached deep into the archives of my brain and pulled out some old DOS prompts, it felt kind of cool. Then once I figured out how to put some software on here, it became a bit charming, I'll admit. It's still completely impractical and insanely niche, but at the very least, it's been an interesting week for me. This video is sponsored by Wild Grain. Oh, so excited for this. Oh, like this okay, everybody, oh, settle yeah, down. Yeah, settle yeah. down now. Shh, Peace signs up. I'm going to pass around this bowl, and everybody's going to pick a dish to make for the potluck. Okay? Bob, you go first. Let's see here. Lasagna! Yes! Oh, my God. That's so great. You make the best lasagna. It's my Nona's recipe from scratch. Okay, pass the bowl to Bob. It's his turn now. Whatever I get, I'm gonna make it from scratch too. Give me this. Dessert donuts. Oh wow, have you ever made donuts before? It's pretty difficult. Oh yeah, dude, I make the best dessert donuts. It's my Gam Gam's recipe. Oh, okay, well that's great. Well, we look forward to it. Okay, next. All right, let me see here. Oh, corn pudding, yes! Oh I'm, man, I, I, want, I, want, I want to do a corn pudding. What's corn did you Did you know corn pudding? It's not just corn pudding, it's like food. Wild Grain is the first ever bake from frozen subscription box for sourdough bread, fresh pastas, and artisanal pastries. Freezer to table in 25 minutes or sometimes less. The donuts only took eight minutes. So you can enjoy homemade quality whenever you'd like. Wild Grain is constantly adding new seasonal and limited edition special items that you can try when you're building your next box. For every new member, Wild Grain donates four meals to the Greater Boston Food Bank. They also have a plant-based box that's 100% vegan and a gluten-free box made in 100% dedicated gluten-free facilities that I didn't know about that I will have to try next time. You can try Wild Grain for yourself by going to the link in the description box below and use code WOLFDEN for $30 off of your first box and free croissants for life! Oh, yeah, dude, those donuts were a hit. Thank you, thank you so much. I spent a really long time on it. Eight minutes, I spent eight minutes. Hey, I feel like I've had this lasagna before. You've had Scratch's pizza before? What the hell did you just say? My known as recipe from my uncle Scratch's pizza place. God, I hate you. God, this guy sucks, right? Yeah, oh, yeah you're yeah, right. I never liked him either. My corn pudding. This is called the Pocket 386 Windows 3.11 slash 95 system. Except there's nothing Windows 95 about it. It's only Windows 3.1. So none of my old Windows 95 and Windows 98 games would work. So the way these videos work is normally I stream myself messing around with the product and then I write a little script and then I film the A-roll for the video. And then after that, I mark off any time where I'm looking at my phone and reading off of the script. And then I write what B-roll I need to shoot later. 
So I filmed all the A-roll. This video had about 30 B-roll clips that I needed to get. I got one clip and then the flash drive on this thing just died. Okay, well, that, that sucks. And not like corrupted a little bit, it died forever. So I had to run out to Best Buy and get a CF card, but they lied on their website and they didn't actually have one. So then I ran over to Micro Center and they did have one. And $53 later, I have a compact flash card that's way too big to work. So I had to partition this 64 gigabyte compact flash card to be just two. What a massive waste. And then I need to get an image to flash onto this thing. I found someone on some random forum who graciously uploaded the disk image from their Pocket 386. The website they used to upload it, unfortunately, is archive.org, which has been down for about two weeks now. In an act of desperation, I tweeted my issue and somebody did actually send me a link that had an image that I could use. This one worked great. I spent a long time trying to figure out how to flash a ghost image, but then I found there's a bin file and I used Rufus to flash that bin file to my new drive and everything worked fine. Except that now we're in Windows 95. What the? I guess some of these are shipping with Windows 3.1 and some Windows 95. This listing, the pictures had Windows 3.1, but the listing itself had written in it Windows 95. Oh, but you know what? It's fine. This works better for me. Just know that in this video, we're going to be flip flopping back and forth between Windows 3.1 and Windows 95. Also, the day that this whole fiasco happened, uh, was the day that archive.org ended up coming back online. So I, I could have just used that from the beginning. Upon unboxing the unit, the first sign that this was gonna be a nightmare was the charger. Then it was all the adapters. It comes with three different adapters to plug in 30 year old peripherals, a parallel port, a VGA port and PS2 ports. Not PlayStation 2, this predates that. This is for old keyboards and mice. There is a USB port on the side, which will not work with a mouse. It only works with expandable storage, which is actually extremely handy. I'm grateful for at least this one modern convenience. This technology predates USB. USB 1 was released in 1996 and probably wasn't in many devices. 1996 was four years after Windows 3.1. The insides of this thing are just old, outdated parts. It's not new technology emulating old software. It's just old hardware doing what it does. The clear case doesn't let any of that retro hardware hide. It also shows you just how terrible this battery placement is. Look at the, that's the battery, look at this. Do you see that? <laughs> Dude, that's, that sucks. <laughs> It's pretty light and very cheap feeling. It doesn't instill a lot of confidence in me. This was an AliExpress situation, so I shouldn't expect too much from it, but it was $200, which is more than I've spent on any one thing on AliExpress. There are cheaper real Windows laptops from the 90s on eBay. When you first turn it on, you're greeted with the wonderful beeps and dot matrix images of dots. And that's it, good luck. It does come with a lovely printout of some tips to get you going. Like, for example, to access Windows, you need to just type win. And now I feel like a hacker. Now, time for another dilemma. There is no mouse, not even one of those little IBM nipples. You have to actually use a PS2 mouse with one of those adapters. Or you could press this little button right here, which acts as a mouse toggle. It turns the arrow keys into mouse controls. It sucks using it like this, but it is what it is, I guess. This also turns itself off after using it for a bit. And the only way to get it back is to restart the whole unit. Would it really have killed them to add a trackpad or even a little track ball? I would have even settled for a PS2 mouse packaged into the box with this thing. Obviously, I don't have one. I'll trade you a, a USB-C cable for one. This screen is a modern-ish 640 by 480p IPS screen. It took me a while to find the keyboard combo to get the OSD up so that I can change the brightness for filming. It is a 16 by nine display and they say it can get up to 800 
by 480 resolution, but it doesn't look like that. It just stretches the image. That's not the same thing. So I just left it at four by three the whole time. They honestly probably should have just put a four by three screen in here. They probably didn't because 16 by nine IPS screens are more widely available. The viewing angles on this screen are also abysmal. Look at that, it looks off. You basically have to look at the screen dead on or else you're not gonna be able to see anything. This Windows 3.1 operating system came with nothing on it at all. However, there are a couple of games preloaded on DOS. For the record, to access them, it's CD game. Then you have to do dir to see which game folders are there. And you can see Doom right there. So CD Doom, then Doom.exe. And it's that easy. I hope the Zoomers watching this have a newfound appreciation for icons on a desktop. Doom is one of the quintessential early PC games. It's been ported a million times. The source code is publicly available. It's a meme that Doom can run on anything. So tell me why it runs like absolute ass on here. Don't actually tell me. I already know the answer. It's like one frame a second. So someone in my chat pointed me towards graphic detail, which can be set to low. That actually helped a significant amount. There are still a significant amount of frame dips, but I'm not sure what I was expecting from three decade old hardware. I used to play Doom as a kid on my family's old DOS computer in the 90s, and my brain does not remember it like this. My brain remembers high frame rates. It's possible I was using better hardware than what was seen here. It's also possible my infant brain was glorifying my experience because at the time, there wasn't anything like it. There is extremely quiet, bad audio. I don't think this thing has a real speaker in it. It does have a sound card, but the audio by default is running through the speaker on the board, which is usually only meant for beeps and boops. From the Doom folder in DOS, you can run the setup, which gives you options to tweak audio if you know what you're doing. I didn't, so I made it worse and muted all the audio by accident. Doom is one of the games that it came with, but I wanted to try putting my own games on here, which honestly ended up being not too hard. It's actually not too hard to get games to play on here. There's plenty on archive.org. There's also a site called My Abandonware. There was no shortage of content from just Googling around. I went a little ham downloading a bunch of stuff. One of the easiest ways to get games on here is just to take out the compact flash card. This two gigabyte compact flash card is the entire OS. I happen to have a compact flash reader, so this file system just shows up on my modern PC just fine. I can easily just download DOS games and then drag them over to the game folder on the compact flash card. From there, it's just as easy to start the games as it was running Doom. So Jay is jump. That's so weird. How? You know what? All right, fine. We'll, we'll live. Dude, it's so fast. What the f***? That's huge. Ah! Ah! <laughs> Holy, get him. Dude, okay, just, just, just get me out. That was terrible. There are some legendary DOS games that shaped the whole industry. Without them, we wouldn't have the games that we have today. Most DOS games are not that. The second way to get games on here is through this Windows 3.1 system. And this is what sort of changed my whole perspective on this device. So what you do is download the disk image from one of the archive sites, and you use a tool such as Rufus to create a bootable USB drive. Now this disk image becomes a bootable disk drive running off of your USB drive. Turns out what this thing was missing was the best of Microsoft Entertainment Pack. I thought these games came packaged in with Windows, probably because these Microsoft Entertainment Packs came pre-packaged with most PCs that you purchase, not necessarily the Windows software itself. This is how you get games like Jezball, Tetris for Windows, Ski Free, and a personal favorite of mine, get ready for this one, Chips Challenge, baby. I just want you to know that you don't have to go through all of this trouble just to play Chips Challenge because Chips Challenge is available for very cheap on Steam and also the Nintendo eShop. And it's the exact same game from 30 years ago. 
I didn't grow up with the Super Nintendo, so I have fond memories of downloading SNES 9X and playing Mega Man X on my parents' compact Passario, but uh, it freezes on here. Freezes the whole thing up, can't play it. Nesticle is an NES emulator that runs in DOS, and I don't think that likes this device either. Uh, I think it has something to do with the mouse. I have so many memories of playing X-Wing as a kid on my family computer. That came with five floppy disks, which means I had to plug the USB drive in here five different times. It also had a horrible DRM system. They give you a code and you need to take out the physical manual and decipher the code. Oh, fuck. Of course, we lost that manual. So my playtime with X-Wing was short lived as a kid. Luckily, you can find the cipher pretty easily today. I remember jumping into the cockpit, having a simulation experience flying around as Luke. Whatever happened in the movies, finally it's on my computer screen and I can play as the heroes. Man, this was the game that I liked. <laughs> I think my little five, six year old brain might have embellished it a little bit. I also use this opportunity to get Photoshop 2.5, which comes on five disks, which means I had to flash this USB drive five times with five different images just for one Photoshop. Let me tell you something, using a keyboard mouse for Photoshop is just so much fun. So I cut the resolution in half on this thumbnail. This is only a 720p image. I figured it would go easier on this little low powered device. And honestly, it's running fine. It's just that navigating Photoshop with the arrow keys as your mouse cursor is horrible. And in Photoshop 2, there's no such thing as like the pen tool or like the lasso tool that goes in a line. So you can't just click your plot points. So what I did was I've just been doing like pointillism. I've been sitting there and clicking and then moving the mouse and then clicking. There's no curves or anything that I can see. So I've just been trying to darken the background a little bit using pointillism. Uh, it's, it's manageable. I uh, never want to do this again. Also, I wrote this whole part on Microsoft Word for Windows 95. Uh, this keyboard is very tiny. All the keys are little chiclet keyboard keys. I'm very frequently hitting all of the wrong stuff. Let's see what spell check brings up. Oh, what a disaster. I did not have my expectations in check when I first took this thing out of the box. I kind of immediately hated it. I hate that it's a modern device with old hardware. I would rather just buy old hardware. At least that would retain a little bit more charm. I'd be willing to excuse a lot more of the headache that comes with using an old device like this. But I'll say, after a little bit of time with it, it did feel very rewarding when I did get things to work. I was a little surprised at how much I was able to get to work on here. Despite there being no real UI in DOS mode, it is kind of fun to type out commands and get a response. It was more fun using a USB drive to flash games onto here. I was also surprised that that worked. After taking this thing out of the box and realizing that there was no mouse, I was expecting a lot more to go wrong. There are a lot more steps involved in order to get something simple done on here, but things went pretty smooth, all things considered. Being able to just download basically any program I want felt pretty cool. It also seems as though it's all completely legal. All the stuff that comes pre-installed on here is freeware and all of the stuff that I've downloaded and used on this thing is either freeware or abandonware that I got from like internet archive sites. Even if the IP holders for some of these programs still hold the license for them, they usually just don't care. Even Adobe. They used to put really old versions of Photoshop up for anybody to download. I haven't seen them talk about this version, but I'm sure that they're not really worried about Photoshop 2. It has been fun messing around with this thing for the past week, I will admit, but it's gonna be hard to recommend to people, especially for that $200 price point. You might be better off just tracking down an actual old PC off of eBay. A USB port for installing ISOs is a nice touch. Being able to pop out the internal drive and pop it into a modern computer 
is also a nice touch, but we've advanced so much as a species since the 90s. I would have loved to have seen a few more modern conveniences in here. I'm wondering if your money would have been better spent on something like a Toshiba Libretto. Libretto? Libretto? A quick eBay search shows that they're more sought after than I would have thought, but maybe there's a reason for that. There's also the Toshiba 3015 CT, which is much cheaper, and I'm sure there's plenty of others. It'll be hard to find one with like a USB port or expandable storage. So as a blast from the past, I wouldn't say I regret my $200 purchase. I do see room on the market for a retro PC, but I'd like to see more emulation being utilized. These emulation handhelds pack a decent amount of power and a decent amount of battery life just to play these old games. I would love to see a similar experience with a retro PC. I would also love to not pay $200 for it. So what do you guys think of the Pocket 386 and what games should I be playing on here? It might change my opinion of it a little bit more. Leave it in the comments below, add me on Twitter, any and all this other social media garbage. I heard through researching this thing, there might be a Pocket 486, which would make it a little more powerful and, and probably an all around better experience. I would like to thank my Twitch chat for this one over at twitch.tv slash wolfden for helping me out while I was playing around with this thing. And if you like this video, please subscribe. I make videos every single week. This one probably isn't gonna do as good as some of the other ones. This one's a little bit more of a wild one. So if you're watching this, you probably watch a lot of the videos. Make sure you subscribe and share this video with a friend, another fellow mid thirties or 40 year old who can remember a time when they didn't have a mouse. Thank you very much. Have yourself a good week.